So in the first part, uh, we saw that uh, Rajkumar Shukla meeting Gandhi, Gandhi accompanying him to Bihar, going to Champaran, Motihari, looking into the matter, was arrested. But then, later on, all the charges were dropped against him. And Gandhiji was allowed to be free in Champaran. And then, Gandhiji started his work. Gandhi and the lawyers now started this uh, far-flung inquiry into the grievances of the farmers. Evidences were taken of the pigeons, things were noted down, documentation and everything. The entire Champaran area throbbed with activity. There were vehement protests of the landlords. Now, meanwhile, the Gandhi was summoned to Edward Gate, the lieutenant governor. <clears throat> he went there, and before going there, he uh, laid down the plan that suppose he was not allowed to come back, then what was to be done? What will be the course of the action? He had long, four long interviews with lieutenant governor. Finally, the result was, an official commission of inquiry into the indigo share cropper situation was appointed. The commission consisted of landlord, government officials, and Gandhiji as the sole representative of the peasants. Now, Gandhi remained in Champaran for initial uninterrupted period of seven months, and then again for several shorter visits. The visit undertaken casually on the entreaty of an unlettered peasant in the expectation that it would last a few days occupied almost a year of Gandhi's life. Now the official inquiry, it came with a result that injustice has been done and reforms have to be made. So they asked Gandhi that, what is the amount to be refunded? Now the way Gandhi had fought the entire fight, everyone thought that he would not accept anything less than 100% which they had illegally and deceitfully extorted from the sharecroppers. But to everyone's surprise, Gandhiji asked only for 50%. And one of the uh, missionary, British missionary, Reverend J.G. Hodge, who was there in Champar, and he writes that there he seemed adamant. It seemed that he was not going to uh, leave that demand. And so the British landlords, they felt that if they would offer something less, Gandhiji would never agree. Now just imagine, if you expect someone from, from someone that he, will, he or she would <clears throat> not accept anything less than 100% and that person demands only 50%, so there comes the thought that if we offer less, there would be no chance of accepting it. And that was the thing which was going on in the mind of the British landlord. So they offered only 25%. Thinking that, Gandhiji would never accept it and the matter would go on like this. But to everyone's surprise, Gandhiji accepted that offer and he broke the deadlock. The settlement was appointed unanimously. Unanimously means everyone in favor of it. <coughs> Now, Gandhiji explained his action. He said that the refund was less important than the fact that the landlords had been obliged to surrender part of the money and with it part of their prestige. Gandhiji said that the landlords were not only paying money. Money was just symbolic. The most important thing was they were also parting away with their prestige. Now, these landlords, they had acted and behaved as lords above law. And this whole thing, what was the ultimate conclusion of the whole thing according to Gandhiji? He saw that the peasants, they came to realize they had rights and they were defenders. And they learned courage. And they came out of the fear under which they were living. Now, the events which happened later on that justified Gandhi's position. Within a few years, the British planters abandoned their states, which reverted to the peasants. Indigo share cropping disappeared. But 
Gandhiji was a person who was not easily satisfied with just political and economical situation. He had stayed there for a very long time and he had seen the backwardness of that area from very close. So now he started with his social work of social upliftment of that area. He called for teachers, Mahadev Desai and Narhari Parikh, two of his disciples, came there with their families. Several more came from Bombay, Pune and other district, distant parts of the land. Devdas Gandhiji's youngest son arrived from ashram and so did Mrs. Gandhi, that is Kasturba Gandhi. Primary schools were opened in six villages. Kasturba taught the ashram rules on personal cleanliness and community sanitation. Now Gandhiji observed that the health conditions were miserable, so he appealed to the doctors to volunteer their services for six months. They had only three medicines available to them, castor oil, quinine and sulfur ointment. Now castor oil, it is a very thick oil which is generally used for preservative and medication, uh, medication purposes. Quinine uh, or quinine as it is known as was one of the earliest medicine for malaria and then sulfur oil. Now anybody who showed a coated tongue was given a dose of castor oil. Anybody with malaria fever received quinine plus castor oil. Anybody with skin eruptions received ointment plus castor oil. Now Gandhiji noticed the women of that region were not so much particular about health, about this cleanliness and hygiene. So asked Kasturba to talk to them. And when Kasturba talked to them, they one of the women took Kasturba into a hut and said, look, here is no box or cupboard here for clothes. The sari I am wearing is the only one I have. Now that shows the miserable condition of the people in that area. They had been exploited so badly that they had not enough for them. Now, during his entire long stay in Champaran, Gandhiji was always in contact with his ashram. He used to send instructions through letters, keeping accounts, giving instructions for changing the things or making the things. Now here comes the most important part of the chapter. Now this Champaran episode was a turning point in Gandhi's life. Author says that it was a turning point in Gandhi's life. In many ways it was a turning point. Gandhiji was exposed to the backwardness of the rural area. Gandhiji came to know about certain social taboos, certain, uh, 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 certain social uh, curses which were present, just like untouchability and all that, the exploitation of the poor farmers. He also realized that these people who are living under the fear, if they are not freed from that, they would never be able to stand on their own feet. And it also made Gandhi realize that this movement, unless and until it becomes a mass movement, it will not result into victory. And that's why author says that this was a turning point in Gandhi's life. Now Gandhiji explained that what I did was a very ordinary thing. I declared that the British could not order me about in my own country. He said that he did not do anything extraordinary. He just told the Britishers <coughs> that it was his country and they were not there to order him. Author says that the Champaran did not begin as an act of defiance, protest. It did not start as a protest. It grew out of an attempt to alleviate, alleviate means to reduce the distress of large number of poor peasants. Now this was typical Gandhi pattern. His politics were intertwined with the practical day-to-day -day problems of the millions. His law, he was not a loyalty, his was not a loyalty to abstraction, only to thoughts and philosophy. He actually thought about the people. His entire philosophy was directed towards people and he put it into the practical aspect. An author comes to a conclusion that in everything Gandhi did, he tried to mold a new free Indian who could stand on his own feet and thus make India free. <coughs> mold, Gardhana. So what actually Gandhi was trying to do? To create a new Indian who would be self-sufficient who would be self-confident, who would be ready to face any situation and fight his own battle. Early in the Champaran action, Charles Freer Andrews, who is also known as 
देश दीन दीन बंधु एंड्रूज और दैट इज वॉट गांधी जी यूज टू कॉल हिम द इंग्लिश पैसिफिस्ट हु हैड बिकम अ डिवोटेड फॉलोअर ऑफ महात्मा ही वॉज वेरी वेरी क्लोज फ्रेंड ऑफ गांधी जी सिंस लॉन्ग टाइम ही हैड कम टू से बिड फेयरवेल टू गांधी जी बिकॉज ही वॉज गोइंग ऑन एन ऑफिशियल असाइनमेंट टू फीजी आईलैंड now all the lawyer friends of gandhi ji they thought that if andrews would stay back and join the movement in their favor it would give them strength andrews was ready but he said that he will stay only if gandhi allows but when gandhi came to know about it he vehemently opposed he said that you think that in this unequal fight it would be helpful if we have an englishman on our side this shows the weakness of your heart the cause is just and you must rely upon yourselves to win the battle you should not seek a prop in mr andrews because he happens to be an english man he could he could understand why the people were asking andrews to stop but he pointed out the reality to them that if they are seeking a prop in mr andrews it shows the weakness of their heart they are not doing anything wrong they are fighting for a just cause and they should have faith in themselves they should not think of creating a prop or taking the help of a prop of mr andrews because he is an englishman rajendra prasad writes he had read our minds correctly and we had no reply gandhi in this way taught us a lesson in self reliance this was indirectly gandhi ji teaching a lesson in self reliance you have to be self reliant you have to have faith in yourself in what you are doing you should not be taking help from outside to fight your own battle that is what gandhi ji taught self reliance indian independence and help to share copper were all bound to this now all these things was closely associated with each other helping the share croppers making people self reliant and finally resulted in the event that was the indian independence so in this chapter <coughs> we come to know about many aspects of gandhi ji he was not only who had some uh, political goals to set but as well as he thought about the masses he thought about the upliftment of the people he thought about the social upliftment and as author uh, comments it somewhere that whatever he did his aim was to create mold a new indian who could be self reliant and who could be strong enough to fight his or her own battle a new indian who could stand on his or her feet and create a new india now that is all about this chapter that is the indigo by louis fisher